Harry's Wife, Part 104.67, One Million Dollar Duchess Dinner. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and welcome to yet more self-serving tripe involving Harry's Wife. As always, I leave it for you to determine the veracity of the new source. I provide you with the analysis to understand what is going on vis-a-vis the world of narcissism, as only I can provide you being an expert in narcissism. We go this time with the mirror, which tells us Harry and Harry's wife to attend gala with tickets to sit at their table selling for one million dollars. Those of you that are staring inflation in the face and saying, you bastard. Those of you who might find yourself in a heat or eat situation. Those of you who are thinking, hmm, it's going to be slim pickings for the kids this year at Christmas as a consequence of the ongoing cost of living crisis about which I've read so much, will be thinking to yourselves, who the fuckity fuck would ever be interested in not only paying a million dollars to sit with somebody at dinner, that of itself you'd probably find fairly insulting and rather disgusting, but moreover, why on earth would you pay a million dollars to sit on the table with these two? Could you imagine if you're positioned between them? To your left, you've got ginger bollocks. And uh, uh, Harry, what is it? You look a little puzzled, you might ask. Ah, oh, mm, which one do I use for the potatoes? He asks as he stares at the array of cutlery. Can you imagine? He'd probably start drinking from the finger bowl as well. And you'd be subjected to riveting conversation about his latest high score on Call of Duty, the fact that he's still in mourning as a consequence of not being able to find the building block with the curly letter on, which you have to tell him is not kicking car, but curly car, which he nods at vigorously, and also as he attempts to purchase from you a full set of colour felt tips because Harry's wife has confiscated his latest set. Well worth your million dollars. But it would get worse. Imagine having her to the right of you, talking at you all night, telling you about how wonderful she is in that mixture of that nasal, whiny voice, but then dropping down to breathy tones as she tells you, Want to know a secret? I'm going back on Instagram. Yeah, you mentioned that in an interview, you fucking fraud. I've paid a million dollars for this. Come on, you performing monkeys. Give me something good. The repartee will not be witty. The conversation will not be sparkling. Indeed, it'll all be platitudes. Could you imagine? Platitude, platitude, platitude. You'd feel like you turned into a fridge and those fridge magnet platitudes are coming at you, slapping you on the forehead, covering your face, almost causing you not to be able to breathe. Some kind of Kafkaesque nightmare as you run around a maze trying to escape the breathy voice of the syrupy one as she spills all of these platitudes about authenticity, organic layers, multidimensional communities and you can't find the exit and you're sweating and your heart's going to burst through your chest as she continues to pursue you dressed as Fridge by Valentino suddenly morphing into Kermit goes to church and then as you round a corner how did she get there? She's the malevolent chess piece somebody wake me up up. Is this a nightmare? Indeed it is, and you've just paid a million dollars for it. You really need to be questioning yourself. You are either fucking in need of institutionalizing or so rich you simply don't care, and spending a million dollars in this way is akin to everybody else spending a tenner. But let's find out more about this, having painted what I would say is quite a lucid image of what this event would be like. Tickets to a gala where Prince Harry and Harry's wife will be receiving an award, undoubtedly paid for, are selling for up to $1 million. The Nipple of Grope ceremony in New York on December the 6th honours individuals for their charitable efforts and is set to be hosted by Kerry Kennedy, niece of John F. Kennedy. The top-tier pioneer package includes four seats at the main table where the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are expected to be also seated. Other packages include a half a million dollars and include VIP reception access. The event is organised by the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Organisation. 
Previous winners have included US President Sleepy Joe Biden and ex-POTUS's Ultra Slick Barack Obama and Gistain Bill Clinton, as well as former Democratic hopefuls Hillary Hinton and Al An Inconvenient Truth Gore. Hollywood actor and raging narcissist and producer Alec Baldwin will oversee the gala. Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky and Bill Russell, a basketball great and civil rights icon, will also both be honoured. Four days earlier, Prince William and Kate Middleton, their words not mine, will be in Boston attending the Earthshot Prize. It also has links to the Kennedys, with the Prince of Wales having teamed up with JFK's daughter Caroline to hand out five $1 million grants at the Invitation Only Do. A source close to the event on December the 2nd told the Mail Online, this is quiet wealth and power. Think Rockefellers and people like former Vice President Al Gore. A wealthy LA-based heiress told the news outlet, we love the royals, I'd love to try to get tickets for both. You can buy a ticket to the Harry's Wife event, so that's no problem. But the William and Kate event is strictly invitation only, which is making it much harder to get into. And of course, that neatly sums up the difference between those two houses. Quite typically, if the money's right, you get access to Harry's wife, grubbing as always. Whereas, the classier Wales is, well, you've got to be invited. You can't just buy your way in. And that neatly does indeed sum up the difference between the two. But could you imagine paying a million dollars for sitting and having something to eat with Harry and Harry's wife. It's utterly bollocks. But that's my view, and of course it's demonstrative of the level of delusion by which Harry's wife operates that she would attend such an event and for people to pay such sums to spend time with her, money which you might as well strap to a horse and set on fire for all the good it's going to do you talking to her. Of course... This coverage demonstrates the fact that the Earthshot Prize is of greater prominence, but it's necessary for the PR dollars to be pumped out to try and make it pull attention back onto Harry's wife by saying, look, I'm so important, you have to pay a million dollars to sit with me. Of course, most people, those of sane mind, will look at that and think that's nothing to be proud of. In actual fact, I find that obscene. But, hey, maybe I'm just putting words in other people's mouths. Let's dive below the line and find out what people have to say. The Duchess of Sussex. I have absolutely no idea what charitable efforts they've contributed to. Seriously, are they making this stuff up? Asks that individual. Jamie Wan replies to that person, you need to get back to Earth ASAP. The Duchess of Sussex replies, Funny, again you throw out this hateful comment, and again you fail to provide a substance response. You're a Sussex lover. Why don't you tell us what they do for charity? I imagine you can't, because then you look like a liar. Sunday Sport pithily writes, Tickets not to sit next to them are selling for $2 million. Badum. Anti-woke, so that'll be a table for two. Sandy Brown, why would you wish to listen to those two? I would not. Funky Monkey, 81, they'd have to pay me $1 million to sit with them. Jamie Wong keeps popping up in the comments, clearly a fan of the Sussexes. And he's repeatedly making observations to support them. Here goes, writes, bullies bully you into believing that they are kind. Jamie Wan replies, why do fools love bringing up bullying even when it's not there? Hmm. Jamie Wan, the evidence shows that it is. The Huntress, anyone would need their head tested to pay a million dollars to sit on the same table as these two whingers. Beautiful days. That money is better spent being donated directly to charities, not the Harkles' overinflated egos. Spud 2020. Who in their right would pay anything to sit next to the stench of the rotten witch, Harry's wife and the ginger whinger? JW60, I wouldn't pay to sit with those two, and no amount of money could persuade me to sit with them either. Bromfiat's 2 2. Need the money back they paid to receive it? Stargate 999. What a farce. While millions are starving, homeless in the world is an insult for all. Let each one of them give up their grand life and build homes on their vast properties for the needy. 
That is what charity and giving is about. Become the person rather than the status. Big Bass 654. Who in their right mind would pay that much to sit at the gruesome twosomes table? All they can talk about is mental health and themselves. Pretty much gives you a flavour for the way people see them, doesn't it? That nobody would want to cough up that amount of money. I saw you coming one. Your status is meaningless if you pay to sit at the top table. Kronos 2021 makes reference of the registration of Archwell in Delaware State, which is obviously brought up uh, regularly. And, of course, Mrs. Ted observes the mega-rich would pay to attend the opening of an envelope if it enabled them to be seen with other people that they regard as worth being with. And, as a consequence, it shows very much that people have no time for them and that they see that nobody in their right mind would want to make payment. A few people comment that it's more to do with the name Kennedy than to actually to do with Harry's wife. But the fact is, why would you pay a million dollars to sit and listen to the Duchess of Industrial Beige drone on about herself? There are, of course, as I explained, certain narcissists who you'd have a thrilling time sat with, that you'd find particularly interesting, inspirational, amusing, and they have vast amounts of charisma. Harry's wife isn't one. She's a charisma-free zone that just talks in fridge magnet platitudes. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.